Hey guys, Silby Hollow One here. Welcome back to another video, and today, here's my excuse. So, yeah, I haven't made a video in a little while, and this is my reason why. I realized that some sections of my platform hadn't been changed in almost 10 years. So I figured, you know, it's time for a change. So I took off everything that was on top of the platform. I did, I redid all the grass, I redid all the track work, I redid all the wiring. Um, but there's still a lot to be done, so I might actually be making layout updates, which will be kind of interesting, because I did one of them a while ago, and I haven't done one since, because my layout doesn't change at all. So, uh, you may see some things over here. We'll get to that later. I'm gonna do a complete run-through around my layout, and basically describe what things are going to look like. I also made a track plan, um, and, uh, I planned things, surprisingly. If you know me in person, you know I don't usually do that. So, yeah, surprise, things were planned. Rare. Um, but yeah, so I have an actual track plan that has, like, what all the sections are going to look like and which parts are going to be forested and where there's going to be gravel and roads and whatnot. And uh, I'll show that to you guys at some point in this video. So the general concept for when I made this layout was, in a word, switches. Um, my old layout had one switch on the outer loop, one switch on the middle loop, and on the center loop it had three switches, for a grand total of five. This layout has six. It has two over here for this crossover, it's got two on the other side for that crossover, it's got one over here for to go into the sidings, and then it's got a curved 072-054 turnout here to go into each of the sidings, which that switch is an absolute pain in the neck because it's got a dead spot in the middle that is huge and everything stalls on it. And it's fantastic. I'll eventually figure out a way to fix that because that's what I do. But anyway, so switches was the basic idea. So you can now take a train from the outer loop and put it on the inner loop without an issue. And you can run any train on the outer or the inner loop into the sidings as long as it's facing the right way. There's no turnaround loop. So oops, but also, oh well, you just pick up the train and flip it. My layout's small, you can do that. So in its current state, it has grass, which you can see is two different colors. It has lights in the 156 freight station, which I will get to why that has lights and nothing else has lights in a minute. Um, it's got hookups for, or it's got power hookups for the siding, it's got power hookups for the back half of each track, and it's got power hookups for the front half of each track. Um, and other than that, it's got track, grass, wires, and two lights, and some buildings, but buildings are just there as placeholders right now, kind of. They're the actual buildings that are going to be there, but they're there right now just so that I know what things are going to go where and what the general shape is going to look like. Oh, right, and it also has like six hills that were made by putting blocks of foam underneath of the paper grass, because, you know, budget. So there's a lot of stuff that needs to happen on this platform. Um, and it's it's probably going to be a multi-year project, because even though we're in quarantine and we can't really go anywhere, uh, I don't really have a job right now, so I can't make money, which means I can't spend money on getting supplies and whatnot to make this work. So eventually, when I get my jobs back, um, I can actually like buy things to make this look good. But for right now, I'm going to be using what I have, which actually isn't a small amount, but yeah, we're, let's, let's walk around and describe where things are going to be. Alright, so here's the first, like, major change, and that is, you can, this, I still have a ZW. It's not the ZW that I used to have. So, this is, it's a lot newer, um, and it has a capability that I'll get into that I absolutely love, and it's fantastic, and I'm going to be running trains a heck of a lot more now, given that I can do it. Um, but yeah, so starting all this up is like starting an airplane now, so you have to turn on the surge strip and then turn on each of these blocks, and then if you short something, you have to reset them all. So yeah, it's it's actually really cool, and I like having switches, so as you can tell by this thing for lights, and I don't just have it um, hooked up to a transformer. Like, it is hooked up to a transformer, obviously, it needs to get power somehow, but I don't just turn on the transformer. I turn on the transformer, and then flip a switch, and then all the lights will go on. Um, once I actually wire that up. It used to be wired up, and then I took out all the lights because I redid my platform. So there's a lot of holes in the bottom of the layout underneath the paper grass, which is part of the reason why it was redone. But anyway, 
this is a fiasco behind the scenes by the way you can kind of see it here there's a lot of wires that don't go into a harness so they go into wire nuts because i couldn't fit all the wires in the thumb screws on the back of the transformer so i took one thicker wire off of the thumb screw in the back and then i put all the other wires around that and put it put a screw thing on top and uh, or a wire cap and uh, that's how i've solved that problem all right so I realized that, like, in all the years of me having my old platform, I never really fully explained my control setup. Like, I used it constantly because I ran trains, but I never explained what everything did. So, this power pack is to this lever, this lever controls the outer track, this power pack controls this lever, this lever controls the power to all the switches, so this is usually just all the way up. This power pack goes to that other red, le the little lever on the red side. Um, which is eventually going to power all the accessories, and then this power pack goes to the large red lever, which controls the power to the inner track. And then I have the the TMCC command base is off camera. It's on the ground because um, I couldn't fit it up here. And if I did put it up here, it would have so much interference from all the metal that it would just it, it doesn't function. So I don't I have the the controller up here because that's the other thing that I'll get to in the next shot about what's so awesome about this thing. Um, as compared to my old ZW. And then up here I have all the switch controls, which are a little bit more complicated. Basically, this is the crossover on the left side. This is the crossover on the right side. This is the center switch that goes into the siding, and this is the curved turnout that controls which siding is which. These are in this order because this one is closer on this side of the layout than this one. Because, you know, common sense. Alright, so this, I, I love this CW for a basic reason. Um, obviously, I used Lionel's uh, Traymaster Command Control System, uh, which was used in the late 90s to early 2000s. Um, it's a great system, and the reason I don't have a legacy system is because, one, my dad already had this, and two, I have a single legacy engine in my fleet. Everything is either conventional or TMCC except for one engine, and that one engine is the 10th Anniversary Polar Express, which is up here. Um, but you can run that with TMCC anyway, so, like, I just run it with TMCC. But the great thing about this transformer is that it can take commands from the controller for track power, whistle, bell, and direction functions, which is absolutely fantastic. So the way I discovered that this thing actually uses TMCC is when I was setting all this up, I did all of the, the wiring. Everything was wired up except the TMCC command base. So, or... At least, I thought it was wired. It wasn't. A wire was loose. So I started running things, and things were running conventionally, just like, you know, my old transformer did. And I'm like, alright, you know, that's how a ZW operates. And then I realized that the TMCC command base wasn't plugged in, because I went to go run the Polar Express, and it booted up in conventional mode. And I was like, alright, so I plugged in the TMCC command base, and nothing worked. And I was very confused. Like, you would turn up the levers. Like, the inner levers worked because these ones aren't actually controlled by this. Like, they can be. This is technically track 2 and track 3. But they aren't. They start at whatever power is set on the ZW. And then you can change it with the uh, controller. Um, these always start at 0. So you can crank this all the way up to 20 volts. And if the TMCC base is plugged in, it will always start at 0. I didn't know that. So I spent like two hours troubleshooting this thing, trying to figure out what the heck was going on, until I did what you should always do when you start with something that you've never used before, and I read the manual after two hours of fiddling with it. So read manuals, it's important. You will learn things. And then I realized that this actually uses TMCC, and that's the reason it was starting at zero, and I was incredibly happy, because now I can run all my trains with a TMCC controller. The only thing I cannot do with my controller currently is throw switches. So, but I, I don't care about that because I find it fun to use these things. They're a pain in the neck sometimes, but it's honestly, once you figure out how everything works and you iron out all the kinks, it's a lot of fun. Alright, so enough of me being a goon and not knowing how electronics work. So, this is, if you've seen any of my videos in the past, you know that this is the most basic shot. This is where my thumbnails are taken, this is where I start the videos, this is where I end the videos. Um... This is going to look very different than the old platform, obviously. So, first, this track is not going to be elevated. Everything on my layout right now is level. It's maybe not, if you put a level on it, it probably wouldn't be level, but it's level to the platform, mostly. There's bumps and whatnot here and there, but pesky details. 
Um, so hopefully this track will be ballasted, which will be fun because there is a grand total of about maybe a sixteenth or thirty second or sixteenth of an inch between the edge of the ties and the edge of the platform. So there's like zero room. So that'll be fun to do. Um, but both tracks will be ballasted, and this is going to be a lightly forested area. So there might be a couple bushes and shrubs and weeds in the middle here. There's going to be a pond in the background. If I move the T1 here, there's going to be a pond like over here. And then there's going to be a road going in the back that's going to exit the platform about over there. But I'll get into that later. So, oh yeah, and th there might be a campsite if I can ever figure out, you know, how to do it, but correctly. Because t uh, scaling a tent is very interesting. Alright, so here in the corner is going to be, it, this is going to be a more heavily forested area. Um, this hill is eventually going to be smoothed out. It is very steep right now. In fact, I might switch this hill with the one on the opposite corner because that hill's a little less shallow and I can actually put trees there because of the way I do hills on paper grass, which isn't the way you're supposed to do hills, but, you know, budget model railroading. Um, and don't freak out that I'm not going to be using roadbed. There are people out there that will go insane because I'm going to be ballasting track without roadbed. Roadbed's expensive. I'm a college student. I'm going to be graduating with a lot of student debt. I'm not going to buy roadbed. <laughs> I'm going to ballast this as is, and I'm going to do my best to make it look good. And honestly, I don't think it's going to look that bad. I've seen ballasted track in both HO and O that doesn't have roadbed that looks really good. So, but anyway, so this is going to be a heavily forested area. It's going to go back to about here, and it's going to come off and probably end halfway down where the starting, like, basic shot is. And it's going to go back to where that corner is, which I will get to when I move down there. So, this is going to be, like, a lake. This is the lake corner of my layout, um, or because there's a lake over there too, but this is going to be the other lake. Uh, so it's going to come off the edge of the platform and it's going to follow roughly the very odd shape that I'm going to do with my fingers. So this is roughly what it's going to look like. And it's going to have lots of weeds and it's going to have logs and it's going to have shrubs and it's going to be very densely vegetated, I guess. I don't know what the exact word for that would be, but I'm hoping it'll look good. Um, I want to put a little hill in here, but it's very difficult with the way that I do hills. Um, I might try and do a proper hill. That'll be interesting for me to do because, you know, everything else is very cheap. Um, but it works. But that'll be fun. Again, all the track's going to be ballasted. Probably can stop saying that. Uh, and then there's the school here. The school will be lighted, as will all the other buildings on the layout. There's going to be a playground that comes off in the back and goes over here somewhere. Um, but I don't actually know yet. That's the one thing I didn't actually plan on the track plan. Whoops. Um, anyway, so there's also going to be a parking lot in the front. Um, that That's going to be a lot of fun to make. And the road's going to kind of come off, and it's going to go behind the sidings, and then down past the lake that's going to be over here, uh, in front of the freight station, and down in front of this turnout, um, where it's going to go off the edge of the platform. So it's going to be a rather circuitous route, but uh, it should look rather interesting when it's done. Alright, so welcome to what's going to be the station corner of my layout. So, obviously I have the station here, which... Fun fact, this is HO, not O, and I'm sure many of you have been screaming at me for years that this is HO, not O. I don't care. It's a pretty station, and I'm going to keep it here. Um, so in front of the station, there's going to be a concrete platform, which I have no clue how I'm going to do. I'm probably going to end up using Will and Scenic Smooth It, and then like etch in um, the expansion joints and whatnot, but I honestly don't have a clue. So this is probably going to be one of the last things that I add to the layout. Up here is probably going to be some pavement for a parking lot um, that's going to be in front of the station. And then going back, I have no clue what the vegetation is going to look like. So there's a, the heavily forested area that I mentioned over here that I totally forgot to explain in that shot, but I'm not redoing that shot, so deal. Um, that's going to end about here. Uh, and then some lightly forested area is going to come down to like about here where the station is going to start. And then after that, I don't have a clue. Um, it's probably going to stay similar to what it is now. It's going to be like a grassy plains area with some shrubs and some weeds and maybe some kids playing around. I don't know. Um, I'll figure that out later. But uh, obviously the paper grass needs to be trimmed on the edge here, so don't nitpick me for that. But yeah, so that's going to hopefully be the station scene. I think it's going to be really cool when it's done. It's just a matter of figuring out how to do it. So that'll be a fun challenge when I get around to it. 
Alright, so welcome to the fourth and final corner of the layout before I get into detail on all the stuff that's happening in the middle. Um, so this is going to be a lightly forested area. The lightly forested area that I mentioned that's going to branch off of the heavily forested area over here, where the lake's about here, is going to come off and it's going to cover up this area and it's going to kind of follow the road that I mentioned. And the road's going to come off about here. It comes off in front of this turnout. It's a very tight gap and it'll be very interesting to do. Um, but this area is probably not going to have a whole lot to it. Uh, it's just going to be trees and bushes. and My layout is going to have a ton of trees. Like I like trees. I like trees on layouts. I like forests. And making them is very expensive and takes a lot of time and a lot of trees. Like There's a lot of people that are just like, Oh, like I have 200 trees on my layout. I don't have a clue how many I'm actually going to have. It's going to be a lot, though. Alright, so welcome to the middle of the layout. So... This is going to kind of be like a graveled area. This is going to be my, my yard area. So all this is going to be gravel, very similar to like how the, the coal station slash what, where that station was, the Oceanside station. Um, it's going to be very similar to that, except a lot bigger. And it's going to go slightly behind this track, and there's going to be like a chain link fence going in the back, hopefully. But like, we'll see how the rest of the layout turns out. But that that's the hope, is that that will happen. But anyway, so... That'll be pretty cool. Uh, then the road is going to come like in front here and then around in back of the tracks, going very close to the lake that's going to be over here. Um, there's probably going to be like a campfire over here and some people and some bears. Um, but the road's going to go next to the lake, and then it's going to go off somewhere over here um, in front of this turnout, which is a very tight fit because that's a four and a half inch straight. And I really don't want to try and put a road on a curve, because that would kind of be difficult. But, you know, fun challenges. Um, but, yeah, so all this is going to... This is going to be forested over here. This is going to be gravel. And then there's going to be a road coming from the school. And I will show you the school now. All right, so here's the, the school that looks like a fire station, because it doesn't have... The, I think it's called a wind vane. It's the thing that goes on top that's usually got, like, a chicken on it that has an arrow that tells you which way the wind's going. Um... So the school's going to have a parking lot out front, and it's going to have five spaces in it, and the road's going to go off in the way that I've described many times before. Um, but the really exciting part, other than the fact that, you know, I'm going to light this up, um, is I'm going to be, hopefully, doing streetlights. And I've never done streetlights before. I've always been fascinated by streetlights. I've always wanted to do streetlights. But I've never had a road good enough to do streetlights, because the roads on my old layout were rather kind of, they were pretty crappy. Um, and having these really nice, really good street lights on a really crappy road really doesn't look that great. So I'm hoping to do this right and get a good looking road and put some street lights on because lighting and I love street lights. So that'll be a lot of fun to do, but I'm really looking forward to doing the road. And then again, the, the playground's going to come out here and maybe uh, I'm still working that one out, but that'll be a lot of fun to do as well. And I'm trying to figure out if I want to do like an asphalt playground or if I want to do like mulch. I don't know how I'm going to do mulch, but I think the mulch would look really cool. So it's something to think about. All right, so the last thing is inside the, the freight station here. Um, there's two lights inside the freight station. This is the only building on my layout that is currently illuminated um, as of right now. But the two lights are wired up so that I can see track power. So if the inner track, or track 4 if you're using the TMCC remote, is powered up, the left window and like the left side of the building will light up. If the outer loop is powered, the right side of the building will light up. And there's, you may be wondering like, you know, what's the reason for this? If you have lighted cars and you have like cabooses and passenger cars, What's the whole point in, you know, having dynamic lighting and whatnot? Well, because I can use the TMCC controller to power track, I'm probably going to be using that, like, constantly, because laziness, and also it's really cool. Um, but because I'm using that, I cannot see where the lever is. The lever is basically always going to be set to 16 volts or higher, because... I can control the track power again through the TMCC remote. So I need some way to figure out if there's track power, because if there's no trains on it, and I'm going to put a train on, like, let's say, the inner loop, 
and I want to put like an old post-war train and there happens to be track power and I put the post-war train on the track with track power there might be sparks the train might go flying down the track I don't know but odds are it's not going to be that good so I need some way to figure out if the track has power so the way I did that was through these lights and plus it's a really cool effect to have like if you have one train running half the buildings lit up if you have both trains running the whole buildings lit up and it looks really cool and it's functional so I'm sure there's a thousand other ways you could do it you could have signal boxes that have lights in it to show you where track power is and like what blocks are active and whatnot but I like it the way that I did it so I'm gonna keep it so uh, at the end of this video I'm gonna be having a slideshow of me ripping up the old layout because you know why not um, and if you look closely enough you may notice that there's telephone poles on the old layout. I never did a video with the telephone poles on the layout. You can go back and look if you want, but just trust me, they're not there. Um, the telephone poles were there to fix a problem I was having with the TMCC engines. If you watch my Bulkmatic GP9 video, during the running shots, you may notice that the train, as it passes the camera, like, spazzed out, and, like, the motor would go all the way up to its top speed and then almost immediately drop back down to whatever the TMCC controller had it set to. Um, from what I can tell, the reason for that is that the locomotive is having so much interference with ground that it would lose contact with the TMCC signals and kick into conventional mode, at which point it would just go to whatever the track power was, which happened to be 18 volts, and it would fly down the track until it found the signal again and then go back to whatever the TMCC had it set to. Now, the way to fix this, like... TMCC is a very complicated system that I'm going to need like an entire video to go over how it works. But basically the way to fix it is you set up a ground plane that's hooked up to the ground plane on your house. Um, the way I did it was I put a wire into the ground prong of the surge strip that I have. Um, which if you're doing the here in the US, house outlets have 120 volts going through them. It's different in the, US, or in the UK and um, just Europe and Australia. Uh, but... Here in the U.S. it's 120 volts, and if you get electrocuted by 120 volts, it's going to hurt a lot. So please be careful. But basically what I did was I ran that wire that came out of the ground prong of the search strip, and I ran it around the layout, and it reduced the interference, and the trains ran smoother, mostly. Um, it's very finicky. But, yeah, so, and legacy engines are not immune to this problem, so if you're running your legacy engine, you realize the headlight starts flickering, or, like, the, the, your engine's, like, going crazy for some reason, you can't figure out why. Also, I learned the Polar Express can go full speed around 054 curves through this problem. Um, but if your engine's having that problem, you might need to set up a ground plane, because you might have too many tracks or whatnot. I haven't had that issue so far with this layout, but I digress. Um, basically, I never finished the telephone poles. I ripped up the layout before I finished it. So, oops. But also, you know, now I have this, and this is pretty cool. Thank <sighs> you. 